Hey guys, Fishy Baker here. Today we're going to be talking more about electronics and part three here. We are on the water right now. We have some good ice fishing videos coming up soon. But uh, sorry for this video being late. Uh, Nathan had some issues with his family getting COVID and actually my uh, Markham actually ended up breaking. And so we had a completely different setup and I figured we would just wait a little bit longer and get a proper video out. So I'll show you guys what I have set up here for my electronics. Right here, this is the Hummingbird Helix 5. And this is just a summer type sonar. And this is just one you would use for your boat. And it would work great for that. This has chirp and GPS in it. It's a G2. And all we have here is instead of the mount for your boat, for the actual transducer that would connect on the back of the boat, we have an ice fishing transducer that hooks up to the back of the Helix 5 here. And the shuttle mount that I have is actually from the Markham M1 that I previously had, but Nathan and I did some work. We bolted it in here at the bottom, Velcroed the battery and soldered some wires to make it work. So this is a super cool unit. You can see here, I just have a normal flasher. Um, this is my lure right here. Um, so you can see that live action going up and down, but you can also see here more like the summer type sonar as far as being able to see everything really nice. You can see how accurate it is. It's my jig going up and down, super smooth. Really cool to be able to see the fish start to come up for your lure when you're on a big school of them. Uh, so super cool, really easy to adjust the gain and everything, and it honestly does a lot for you. So super unique setup. And next we're going to get on to what Nathan has. So this is what I did have and ended up breaking. But this is Nathan's setup right now. And he has the Markham M1. Yep. This is just your standard flasher. Nathan, you want to talk a little bit more about this? Yep, so here's your range. So off, then on, you're in your 20 foot range, then 40, 60, and then 1, 160, or 40, 80, and then 160. And right now I'm fishing 18 and a half foot of water. So Hard to see on the camera, but yeah, there is a little 18 mark right there. And, and then you can just see my jig going up and down right there. I have the gain up a little bit higher. So there's the gain. Definitely a little dial. bit harder to see on the camera, but uh, yeah. it's basically doing the same thing is what the hummingbird was doing as far as the flasher and steadily being able to see where your jig is. Yeah. Overall, not too much of a difference. A few more cool features with the hummingbird, but both these units work pretty well. Obviously, I'd end up recommending more of the hummingbird approach yeah. just because after a few years, mine literally just broke. I didn't do anything with it over the summer. Try to use it for the first time this winter and it wouldn't even turn on for a while and then I'd get it to turn on and the whole screen would just be green or yellow. And then it just ended up being super, super loud and sounded like it was going to explode or yeah. something. So I'm like, whatever, I'll spend the extra like $90 for this transducer to hook up to the Hummingbird and it's been great. It's honestly been better than the Markham itself. Yeah, so one thing you need to do is you need to have a good electrician to kind of mount these a little bit better and i mean you can do that in open water too and help but that's a key part i mean it's not going to be like it's a little bit more clanky than the markham but yeah I mean, and what he kind of means by that is that these wires didn't have these clamps or anything on there originally nathan did that himself yeah. and he also had to take the fuse we had from the markham and he soldered that together with the wires here from this hummingbird and made a great fuse for the for the red wire there and it's been working perfect so next we're going to get into the aqua view setup and that's really our final electronic piece that we end up using all right guys now we are going to get into our aqua view setup now coming up in future videos you are going to see aqua view footage of just directly screen recording this is a little bit of a difficult process. You guys can see all the different components here that I have laid out, but I'm gonna kind of go through step by step 
what we use. And first up is this Aquaview. And this is an Aquaview 715C series. Now this is a little bit older version. So what I have to do for my setup is a little bit more complicated than what other YouTubers do. But this is why I wanna go through this because there is not a lot of videos out there that explain how to do this properly. And it's a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna try my best to go through it nice and easy for you guys. So first off, what you're gonna need is just a nice set of RCA cables or AV cables, whatever you wanna call them. I mean, this is a little bit long, but I like to keep this set up in a little bag like this. That way it just doesn't get wet and then I have enough space for the camera to be in the shack kind of doing whatever. So I just zip tied these here and in my Aquaview 715 here, there's just the one yellow EV video out. So all you do is you just put, plug that in there and next, what we have is an AV to HDMI converter. You can just get this at Best Buy from Insignia. And it's important to make sure you don't get the HDMI to AV one because that is not going to do what you need to do for this AquaView. So then what you do is you take the other AV cords and pretty explanatory here, you just plug them in. And it also comes with this other USB cord. It plugs into the back right next to the AV cords. Now this is because this doesn't run on power from the other things like the game capture, which is where, what we're going to get into in a little bit. It needs its own power source. So now what we have is a just a power pack. It's important that you have two, at least two USB uh, ports to plug into and that is what this is to give it power you plug it into it turn this guy on and you can see the green light right here so this is powered up and ready to go now what we have is the game capture this is by far the most expensive thing out of this uh, setup besides the camera itself this is like 20 bucks the av cords i got from amazon for like six bucks this is around $110. This is the Avermedia 2 Plus. And what this does is your video gets sent through all these cords and stuff. And then you have an SD card like I have here. I have a micro SD card and I plug that into the back. And the game capture allows the video from the screen to be stored into that micro SD card and then you can end up plugging that into your computer and doing what you want with the video. But this too also needs a plug-in. It came with that HDMI cord. So what you do, you put it into the HDMI out section of the converter, and then you put that into the in section of the game capture. Pretty simple there and now you can see nothing is still turning on. I still don't have any power to this. It's pretty much pointless. Everything up until this point is useless until I plug in this USB to the power pack again. And now you can see it's blinking blue and that means it is ready to go. I have the micro SD card in the back meaning that I have a setup ready to go, and now it's solid blue. So now what we can do here, I'll turn this on, and all you do to record is just click the main button there, and you can see it's gonna start blinking red. That means you are recording the screen, and so what is gonna appear on my SD card is what you guys are seen on that screen there. I'll just put the footage of what the camera is seen directly instead of the iPhone view. And so there it is, there's Nathan there. <laughs> and uh, so that's how you do it. So 
a lot of different setups there as far as the wires and components you need. But something simple like just a little power pack. Again, this and the converter you can just get at Best Buy. Really simple. Both these items are pretty cheap. Got to spend a little bit more on the Avermedia 2, but still worth it. Me and Nathan have been getting some really cool footage of these big schools of bluegills coming up and eating our jigs. And we've been trying to get it on a tip-up bite, but every time we put it on a tip-up, it just seems like the fish just shut off and we're working on that. But uh, so far, it's been working good. Again, this is for the older camera. Now with the newer style cameras, a lot of them just have an HDMI port in the back. And so you won't really need the converter setup. All you're really gonna need is just the HDMI cord to plug right into the back of the unit. And that's where I was getting stuck a lot of times trying to find proper videos is because for older versions like this, not a lot of people have them. So it's hard to really find a good video on how to set this up. So hopefully this setup actually helps you guys out if you have an older camera like this or just a camera in general that has the AV unit, that AV out and a really nice converter get your, all your footage on this micro SD card. I like the bigger version of the 256, houses about nine hours of storage. So what's really nice about this is I can just keep that camera rolling all day on a singular tip up if I really want until I know it's gonna get hit. So now we're gonna move on to the safety aspect of what Nathan and I go through while ice fishing. Probably the most important part of all of ice fishing is just making sure you're safe out there not falling through you don't want to take chances and we're going to get into that right now so what nathan and i are going to talk about now is more of the safety aspect of ice fishing obviously yep. especially in early and late ice um a lot can go into it you need to know for you what is safe yep. so we are always making sure we are safe if we are sketched out by an ice even if it's like four inches and the ice just it's a little opaque or it's kind of cracked and we don't really mess with it. Mm -hmm. um, as good as early ice fishing can be, it's not really worth it. But at all times, you want to have what we are about to go over. So I'll let Nathan start out here. So first, you should always have some ice picks, which pretty much just go around your neck like so. And then if you fall through, then you hold them like this. Then whenever you hit the ice, it brings back these nail type things which will definitely go through that ice and then you can pull yourself out distribute all your weight on the ice yeah so what nathan's talking about there is uh when you stab you know you don't want to panic when you're getting out obviously you want to get out quick and efficiently but when you stab the ice what you don't want to do is put all your weight on that one spot because then you're going to fall back through again yeah. you want to take your picks and kind of get a little bit farther out in front of you and then just kind of slowly crawl your body weight up onto the ice, kind of spread out more. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely the way to do it. I'm glad you brought that up because that is definitely something important. Yep. A lot of people just think, oh, like I'm in, like I'm in the water, I gotta get out. But that can actually lead to a lot more trouble if you try and do it quickly and don't know how to exactly do it. Um, another thing that is great to have is just some rope. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody does fall in and they're having a hard time with the picks, this is great to just grab, just throw them the rope and you hold on to one end and they can, it's just something else for them to grab. Yep. Um, I always have some rope with me too because we experienced this last year when fishing with some friends, but their car went into the ditch going into a place we were fishing. And we tried to get them unstuck for probably an hour or so and more than that. yeah probably like, more than that like two hours yeah and nothing was working we put blankets and stuff underneath the tire trying to get them out and i completely forgot i had this rope and uh i ended up eventually remembering and i strapped it to the back of my car we hooked it up and it was super easy i wish i just remembered that from the start because he was out instantly everyone was safe and that saved us a lot of expense and hassle with calling a tow truck and trying to get it back into this back swampy area where we were fishing and that would have been a disaster so always make sure you have some nice sturdy strong rope on you 
you never quite know when you're gonna need it. Um, one other thing I wanna talk about really quick is just ice suit. Um, I have a Frable suit, it's upstairs. Um, we aren't gonna grab it, but um, nice suit. Uh, a lot of times, especially ice fishing, a lot of companies like Frable have gotten really smart and actually made floating suits. It's heavy, like it's gonna do its job and keep you warm. But if you do fall in, like we said before, um, you're just gonna float right when you hit the, the water. And that is super important because sometimes if someone goes into shock while they go into the water, they're not always thinking about, oh, I gotta kick my feet to get back up. Um, the floating suit, super essential, uh, allows you to just naturally come up. You can find the edge of the ice and slowly bring yourself up. They are pretty expensive, I'm not gonna lie, but definitely a big safety thing that I think a lot more people should be using. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope you guys learned a few things. Yeah. We have had a lot of success. I don't even remember the last time we've been skunked ice fishing, honestly. It's yeah. been a long time. Uh, just some basic setups like we showed you. Uh, noodle style rods for jigging for bluegills and panfish. Uh, Tip-ups, you know, the electronics and where to set those up. Yeah. Uh, whether it's the K-drill, a gas auger, I mean, the gas augers aren't bad. You use what you got, but obviously that ion auger with the all lithium battery is super nice. Hope you guys learned some stuff and we will see you on the ice this year with a lot more videos to come. Thank you for watching.